Yo dude, how's it going? Welcome back to another video and thank you for taking the time to watch this. This is a video all about how to look after your tools. No, I mean like, not. Let's get to it. Over the course of this video, I will teach you how to look after both your airbrush and your brush to ensure that what you're using is in the absolute tip top condition at all times. For anyone that's wondering, I'm using an Iowata Eclipse HPCS, which I feel is the best airbrush that you can buy and a Windsor and Newton Series 7 size one brush. Now this brush, again, similar to the airbrush, I feel is the best brush that you can buy. Certainly, if you're looking for a good Kalinsky Sable brush, for me, this is the best one out there. For now though, let's concentrate on the airbrush and what you need to do to ensure that this stays absolutely pristine forever. Basically, the biggest rule is after you have used the airbrush, clean the airbrush. It doesn't matter how busy you are. It doesn't matter what you need to do. If you can't clean it for 20 minutes, just put some water in it and then walk away, come back and clean it. But don't leave it sat there covered in paint, uncleaned, because the next time you want a hobby, it's not gonna work very well. You're gonna need to do a lot of work to get this to the position where you want to use it to get your paint on the mini. And let's be honest, if you put that block in front of you, you're gonna find it pretty difficult to get the motivation to go and do some more hobby. So once you finish painting, here's exactly what you need to do to clean your airbrush. I'm even gonna go through the stages that I do about once a month for my airbrush maintenance. Now these steps are completely optional, but they do include a few extra things you can do to improve the lifespan of your airbrush. Okay, so first thing you've got to be doing once you've got your airbrush and you've finished painting is start to break it down. Obviously you can see here the areas that we need to clean the most. We've got the cup of the airbrush as well as all the internal parts of it. You're gonna need some kitchen roll. Get some decent thickness stuff, you don't want it falling apart in the airbrush. An old toothbrush, a selection of various different gauges of like pipe cleaner brushes. You're gonna need as well something really small. So these interdental brushes, I find are really, really useful for getting right down into the tip of the nozzle. You need some Iowata lube, to make all your comments right now, and some cotton buds as well. Lastly, the only other thing you'll really need is some airbrush cleaner. Now, I don't use this stuff very often at all. In fact, this bottle's lasted me about two and a half years or so, but it's useful to get really into the tiny areas where paint may have started to clog up. Now all my little brushes, toothbrush, etc., all of that, I just leave in a pot of clean water. I clean out once a week and make sure it's nice and fresh because it's always there ready to go whenever I need to clean the brush. Now follow your own manufacturer's sort of guide on how to disassemble your airbrush. One of the reasons I love the Eclipse so much is that it breaks down really easily into parts that you do need to clean and parts that you don't need to clean. You don't need special tools to get into any part of this. You can get every access that you need with just your hands. Now, first thing I always clean is the needle and you can see just how dirty this gets, even how far down the needle this gets. So first thing to do is to take that toothbrush and just some water, honestly, that'll be enough. And we're gonna clean all of this off. So put it nice and flat on your work surface and brushing from the bottom to the tip of the needle just go with your toothbrush. Don't go side to side, you might bend the needle. By the time you're done, the needle will be perfect and pristine clean as if it was brand new. The next thing you wanna do is clean the inside of the airbrush cup. Now for this, you're gonna to need to do a lot of scrubbing if you've left this to, to sit or you've been doing a very long airbrush session. And so one of the things I recommend is that if you've got a lot of everything to do, every now and again, just wipe out the inside of the cup using a bit of paper towel. You can get in the bottom with a cotton bud. This one, this particular airbrush, there's a it's kind of a lip just on the inside there, which can make cleaning in there a little difficult. Also, make sure you get those pipe cleaner brushes and go all the way down the length, the entire barrel of the airbrush. This is gonna clean out any paint that has gone backwards with the motion of the trigger, pulling the needle back through the airbrush cup into the barrel of it. I'm gonna clean all of that out, make sure there's no sort of 
lurking bits of dried on paint. And if there are, you can use the airbrush cleaner on a bit of a cotton swab. You can get into all those areas. It will help dissolve the paint. Also, about once a month or so, it's one of those maintenance things I do, go in through the back of the barrel and clean everything there. As you can see, this does get pretty messy. And not only do that as well, go in from the top and clean all of the areas around the trigger. These are all areas that can catch just a little bit of paint and keep doing it until you're happy that you've cleaned out everything you need to from those areas. If you don't, paint will start to accumulate and especially down the length of the barrel, it will start to pinch on the needle as well and kind of stop that from being able to move as freely as you want, which will ultimately mean you're going to lose some control. We're using the various other brushes and bristly things that we have to clean the other elements. So for the nozzle protector, a mixture of the two brushes there will do it. Quick wipe with a paper towel and we're good to go. For the crown of the airbrush, which I recommend everyone leave on, just use one of the biggest, fattest gauge of these wire bristled brushes. Sorry, not wire bristles. These wire brushes with bristles that are made of nylon that you have. Now for the nozzle, start off cleaning with one of those pipe cleaner brushes. You want to get in there and you're looking to make sure you hit all of the sides of the nozzle with this to dislodge any areas there that don't, uh, like, that basically that aren't completely clean. Then go in with one of these other small dental brushes again, just to be sure you've got all of the stuff out from the nozzle. And the next bit, you might not agree with. Now this step is slightly controversial, so bear with me. You can buy these little sort of rods with a spike on that you can push into your airbrush nozzle to clean that rather than using the needle. But here's why I think that is a terrible idea. First off, while you can buy them made by commonly your airbrushes manufacturer, so you know it will fit the size of the hole in the nozzle. Sometimes you can't. And there's absolutely no way of guaranteeing that that will fit and not distend and push out the end of the nozzle. Now, if that happens, whenever you push down the trigger, air will be able to pass over the needle and out the little gap left at the end there, which will pull paint out of the airbrush cup and spray it. So if you distend the nozzle on your airbrush, you need to buy another one because it ain't gonna work very well. Secondly, because what you're using to clean the nozzle with is something you don't really care about. If that little spike breaks, well, you just buy a new one. You're gonna be a little bit less careful when cleaning the airbrush nozzle. If you use a little bit too much pressure when trying to clean that, if you just sort of stab it through, you might break the nozzle. And so I would rather use the airbrush needle, very carefully insert it into the nozzle with a little bit of water that you've sort of just run down the needle into there to help lubricate the surface, to stop it scratching something. Put it right inside to the very end of the nozzle and then just gently feel around the edge. What you're looking for is the feeling of resistance. You're not trying to clean this with the needle. You're not stabbing away with that. What you're looking to do is to just see if there's any paint left around the inside of the tip of the nozzle. If there is, you go back with your interdermal brushes, you give that another clean, you keep going until you're satisfied your airbrush is fully cleaned. Now, in this video, you saw that as I pushed that needle down, there's a little bit of paint that just came out the edge. That's great, but don't start pushing your needle down there trying to find all those bits of paint because again, you'll push too hard, you'll bend the needle perhaps, you'll distend the nozzle. You must be careful in cleaning these parts. A brand new nozzle and a brand new needle for this are not cheap. I'll put the prices up on screen. So this is something you don't want to get wrong. It's worth taking the time, just like it is worth taking the time cleaning and maintaining every part of your airbrush. Okay, now as part of the airbrush maintenance, we're using some Iowata lube. And basically we're just gonna put this on any areas where metal hits metal and where there's an O-ring. 
Now I've done all of the work here by hand to be sure that everything is nice and clean. You could use an ultrasonic cleaner, but I really strongly recommend that you don't. Your airbrush is basically sort of plated with stainless steel and an ultrasonic airbrush cleaner can start to erode the steel from your airbrush, which makes it harder for you to clean in general. So as a result, just a little bit of elbow grease, that's the way. Now, when you store your airbrush, don't store it like this in your airbrush cup. The brass uh, nib will rust and you might get things falling in the airbrush cup. So just pop it on the side there, nice and safe. Happy days, airbrush, fully cleaned, ready to go. So let's talk about brushes. The reason I use this particular brush, the Series 7 number one, is because it gives me a absolutely perfect point throughout the lifespan of the brush. The reason I use the size one for pretty much everything is because the tip is fine enough to get me exactly where I want, even for eyeballs. The recent painting faces video we did using exactly this brush and nothing else. So cleaning your brushes, I use these two products. And of course I do empty the paint water out of my brush cup quite often as well. The first one is the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver and then we use Gentastic's Drunken Brush Goop. The reason we use the two I'll get into as we go through the cleaning process. Firstly, the Masters, it's primarily a soap. It's there to help clean everything off of your bristles. Start off by adding some water to the soap. Most of you will know how to do this sort of thing from just personal hygiene, and then using the brush carefully. and Don't sort of scrub hard into the surface, just back and forth, move the brush in a gentle motion and work up a lather using the soap. Don't try and bend the bristles back on themselves. Use the brush in the same motions that you would use if you were painting a miniature. You wanna get a nice sort of foamy set of suds all around the bristles. This will help to remove any of the dirt that you might have had on your paintbrush when you were painting. So clean your brush and just move it back and forth in your hand. This will help you bring the brush to a nice sharp point, as well as help to remove anything else that might be lurking in the bristles. If you don't do this every time, that's not the end of the world, but I'd strongly recommend you doing this if you've had a long painting session with things like metallics or colors with a really, really strong pigment like red and some blues and so on. Really those bold primary colors. Next up, we're using the Gentastics Drunken Brush Goop. Now this isn't a cleaner, or well, it can be used as one, but I find it's much more of a conditioner. So the same way that you would condition your hair perhaps, this is gonna help condition the hair on your bristles. So what you wanna do is you wanna use the same motion to work up a lather with your brush, get that nicely all around the bristles. And then other than that, we're kind of done. We're gonna clean some of this off. I'm gonna smooth the brush to a nice sharp point but then we're gonna leave it without washing this off. And what this will do is it will sit on the bristles and it will start to be able to soak into the brush hairs themselves. So just pop that away in this little plastic protector and then store it horizontally or vertically with the tip downward, as long as the tip isn't touching anything. That's exactly how you leave your brush. Well, there you are guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you've got something from it. This is maybe less of an entertaining video, but certainly more of an educational one. Proper brush care is something I'm asked about a lot and really how to clean your airbrush, how to maintain it properly to make sure it's usable constantly throughout your hobby is something else I get asked a lot. So hopefully all of you guys that have been directed to this video got something out of it. If you're looking to buy either of the products used in this video, then I don't have an affiliate link for regular paintbrushes, but go to your local art store, support your local stores to make sure they can stay open. Unfortunately, the art store closest to me couldn't survive off just me buying some brushes from them and has unfortunately closed down. Use the link in the video description below to graphicair.co.uk and use the code MHM10, Mohawk Miniatures 10, MHM10, for 10% off your order. You can pick up an Iowata Eclipse right now for around £120, which bear in mind I've seen it going as high as 160 That's a really good deal. And honestly, you're not gonna regret buying that airbrush. If you've got any questions about how to use an airbrush, if you've got any questions about things that you might have had an issue with whilst trying to get some airbrush work done, then please leave a comment on this video or pop into the Twitch stream where you can ask me a question in real time and get an answer. Hopefully we'll see you in the streams. Peace out.